Hello, welcome to this lab on projectile motion and ballistic pendulum. As you see in the lab manual, the objective of this experiment is to measure the velocity of projection of a ball like this using two methods. The first method is to use a gun. Now here I have a gun that can be loaded by this ball and I can project it, I can shoot it like this. Well, we will use the vertical and horizontal motions of this projectile to obtain a value of the velocity of projection. Now, you know from the theory class that if you project an object horizontally from a height, let's say the height from where you project it is y0. Let me see if I can write it a little bigger. Now, this is the, the surface of the table. So this is the table and the height from which the ball is projected is y0. So we will project the ball from a height y0 with a velocity v0. What will be the path of the ball? The ball will take a parabolic path and say it will fall on the table somewhere here. Now in the process it will travel a horizontal distance x. Now tell me how is this horizontal distance traveled depends on this v0 the velocity of projection. What happens to this velocity of projection with time? It does not change. It remains a constant. So we have x equal to v zero t, where t is the time taken by the ball to fall. And during this same time t, the ball is also falling through a vertical height, given by y zero equal to one half g t squared. In other words, you can now solve these two equations and obtain an equation for V0. Can you do that? Can you solve these equations? In other words, I want you to eliminate T from these two equations. Eliminate T from these two equations and obtain an equation that connects y0 and x. Can you do that? Alright, take a moment and do this. Well, if you have difficulty, I'm going to help you. What we need to do is use the first equation, x equal to v0t, to solve for t. What is t equal to? t equal to x over v0. Now, Take this value of t into this equation and write it as y0 equal to one half g times t squared. Now this is your t. t squared therefore will be x squared over v0 squared. Alright, now you look at this equation and tell me what are your variables. In this lab, what we're going to do is we will change the value of y0. In other words, the height from which the ball is fired is going to change. When the height changes, the x value, the range of the ball will also change. So, your variables are y0 is one variable and x is the other variable. So, 
You can actually use this equation in that form. Can you write this in the form y equal to mx? Well, although it is y0 that we change and we measure x, I'm going to solve in this case for y0. So, let me rewrite this equation in the form y equal to mx. If y0 is one variable and x is the other variable, the remaining quantities are all constant. So look at the way I'm going to write it. It is y0 equal to 1 over 2gv0 squared. I'll write that all together times x squared. So, you draw a graph of y0 on the y-axis and x squared, the horizontal distance squared on the x-axis. Your slope will be 1 over 2g v0 squared. Now, knowing the value of g and from the measured slope of your graph, you can obtain a value of v0 squared or v0 and that is the first part of the experiment so the first part of the experiment is use a horizontal projectile to figure out the velocity of projection okay let's do this part of the experiment to collect data we are going to first in our first trial we are going to shoot this ball from a height of 10 centimeter, 0.1 meter. Well, since I'm going to give you that height, you can see this is the height. The ball is at a height of exactly 10 centimeter. You can actually measure this now. The height is measured from the top of the table. All right, so we are going to fire it from a height of 10 centimeter, and I'm going to keep a screen out here for you to see the ball landing. And now take a close look and see where the ball is landing. And you need to measure the distance x. The distance x is going to be measured from this point. Okay, now. Let me fire the ball and watch it carefully. If you watched it carefully, the ball fell at this point. And you can see I have kept a ruler there to help us measure that distance. I measured the distance from where the ball fell. This is where the ball fell. And I measured the distance up to here. And this is the initial position of the ball, and that is 56.5 centimeter, 0.565 meter. Now, what I would like you to do is, you measure this distance on your computer screen and obtain your conversion factor. All right? You measure the distance on your computer screen divide this number by your measured number that will give you the conversion factor and then you will be measuring the distances now on on your own for each value of y0 I will do three trials and you need to find the average value of x for those trials and you need to tabulate. You got to make your own tables. All right. I'm not going to give you tables anymore. You got to say trial one, trial two, trial three, average x value. And that is how your table should look. All right. I have done trial one and I'm going to do two more trials for the first y0 value. All right. Let's uh, do the second trial. Okay, here is the second trial. Watch carefully and locate the position. All right? There is the position. Okay, measure that distance from here 
on your computer screen and multiply it by the conversion factor. That is trial number two. All right, here's the third trial, and I will not point out this time you need to find that position on your own. Watch carefully. There it goes. I have now increased the height y0. The new y0 is now 15 centimeter. And remember, x is always measured from this point. That is the position of the ball. I have placed a white disc here. So when you measure the distance x, it must be from the center of this white disc to the position where the ball falls. So you need to look very carefully where the ball falls and measure that distance. That is your x. Okay, now let's do the first trial for the second y0 value. And there we go. Watch carefully. Let's now do the second trial here. All right, ready? Watch carefully. And now we have the third trial. Again, watch carefully. I have now changed Y0 to 20 centimeter, 0.2 meter. And let's do the first trial. Watch carefully. Try and make the measurements as accurate as possible. All right. Let's do the next trial. And now the second trial. Watch carefully. And now the third trial. There we go. Watch carefully. I have now changed Y0 to 25 centimeter, 0.25 meter. Let's uh, do the first trial there. Well, I haven't loaded the gun. Let's load the gun first. Okay, the first trial. Let's go. Watch carefully. Now the second trial. Let's go. And now the third trial. You might say, isn't it difficult to measure the distance when the trials come one after the other very quickly? What I would like you to do is, the moment you locate the position on the screen, you pause the video and then measure the distance. And then continue to the next trial. Again, locate the position pause the video and measure the distance. So every time you pause the video, just like every time I do one trial, I turn off the camera. All right. I have now changed Y0 to 30 centimeter, 0.3 meter. And let's do the first trial. I have to load the gun first. Okay, and I, I hope you are making sure that the distance is always measured from this white spot. And you can see that is directly below that dark mark on here, which is the position of the ball. Okay, let's do the first trial for Y0 equal to 30 centimeter. Here is the first trial. Mark the position. Mark the position. Okay. 
Okay, let's do the second trial and watch now. Well, mark the position and measure that distance. This time I'm going to wait for you to measure that distance. All right? I don't think you need more than 10 or 15 seconds. Okay. Let's now do the third trial on that Y0. Here we go. Okay, locate that position and measure that distance X. Okay, look at the last value of Y0. It is slightly different from the increment that I have been using. The last value of Y0 is 36.5 centimeter. 0.365 meter. Watch that value. Okay, let's do the first trial. All right, observe carefully and look for the position where the ball falls. The first trial. All right, take measuring, finish measuring that distance for the trial one. And we are now ready for trial two, okay? All right, trial two, here goes. All right, mark that position and measure that distance. Ready for the third trial? Okay, let's do the third trial. Here goes the third trial. Watch carefully. All right, measure that distance. and obtain the average X value each time. And once you have all the X values, draw your graph, set up your equation, and draw your graph with, well, you know, the variables that you're going to do, the Y0 on the vertical axis, and the X squared on the horizontal axis. Measure its slope, and obtain a value for V0 from there. Okay, we will now go to method 2, the second method of obtaining V0. In the second method, we are using the same equipment. We will fire this ball, and this time I have given you the mass of the ball. The mass of the ball is small m equal to 63.6 gram and we will fire this ball with the same velocity you have measured the velocity of projection once we are going to measure it one more time but this time you're going to fire this ball into this pendulum you see this is the ballistic pendulum now once the ball is projected into the pendulum, the ball will collide with the pendulum perfectly inelastically. That means the ball and the pendulum will become one system and it will move away. Now, what hap just watch what happens. I'm going to fire the ball into the pendulum and see what happens. There you are. The pendulum moved away and it rose to a height. Now, I want you to understand the process in here. Now, there are two processes happening here. One, a collision occurred. And you know that in any collision, momentum is conserved. Now, what does that mean? It means when you fire the ball, what is 
the momentum of this ball before it got into the pendulum bob. If the velocity of projection is V0, the initial momentum Pi equal to m times V0. Mass of the ball times its velocity of projection. Now, this ball, once it gets caught in the pendulum, the system, the, the instant when the ball hits the pendulum, the system has a velocity. Now, let that velocity be big V. Big V is the velocity of the system. The velocity of the system at the instant of collision. That means at that time it has a kinetic energy. What is the kinetic energy just when the ball hits the bob? That will be one half of the total mass m plus m v squared. Alright, what is the momentum of the pendulum, the system, the si when I say the system, I mean this ball and the pendulum. What is the momentum just after the ball got loaded onto the pendulum? Its velocity is V, that final momentum Pf equal to total mass, which is small m plus big M, times big V. What does big V stands for? The velocity of the system after the moment it hits. Okay, now you know that conservation of momentum demands that initial momentum equal to the final momentum. So, I can now write an equation. Let me take this off. Write the equation, m times v0 equal to m plus m times v. Well, this equation we obtained using the conservation of momentum. And then, we can use the conservation of energy. How do you use the conservation of energy? The instant when the ball hits the pendulum, the system has a velocity V. That means the system now has a kinetic energy. I'm going to write it over here. The system has a kinetic energy, I'm going to call it K, equal to one half times the total mass, which is M plus M, times the velocity of the system, that is V. So the kinetic energy just when the ball hits the pendulum is one half m plus m V squared. And with that kinetic energy, the system will climb to a height h. If you can measure that height h, well, then you can calculate the potential energy U. Potential energy U will be the total mass M plus M times GH. Now, because the total initial energy, all of the initial energy is kinetic, and all that energy becomes potential, we can now write one half of small m plus big M times V squared equal to M plus big M times GH. Well, now how do we deal with these two equations? We have equation 1 which is the momentum equation and equation 2 which is the conservation of energy equation. Is that right? Okay. Now, in order to solve, we need to find V0. 
All right, how do we do that? First of all, if you look at equation 2, m plus m on either side will cancel. And that means if I multiply both sides by 2, I will be left with only v squared on the left side. And what is that v squared equal to? When you multiply both sides by 2, you get v squared equal to 2gh. And now, if v squared equal to 2gh, then that v will be equal to square root of 2gh. So, v equal to square root of 2gh. We, we can now take this value of v and bring it into this equation. Alright, I'm now going to take off a lot of these junk from here. I'm going to take off all these except that. Okay, what are we supposed to do? Bring this value of v into our first equation and that will give me m times v0 equal to small m plus big M times v. v is square root of 2gh. And now, to solve for v0, what all we need to do is divide both sides by small m. So that will be v0 equal to small m plus big M over small m. And that quantity multiplied by square root of 2gh. Okay, that means you know the value of small m, I gave it to you. You know the value of big M also, I gave it to you. We got to convert both to kilograms. And if you now measure the value of H, we can calculate the value of V0. Now, what is H equal to? Now, remember, H is the height through which the pendulum has been lifted. That means you need to know the initial height. Now, the initial height is where the pendulum was originally and you know we measured that in the first part the ball this is exactly at level with the position of the ball that is 10 centimeter so that height is 10 centimeter and if you can now measure this height well you need to measure this height now, how do you measure that height? We need to measure, well, it will be easier if I can measure it from the top of this instrument. That means the height of, well, the height of this platform is three centimeter. So, if I measure the height of the ball from the platform and add three centimeter to that, and that should be sufficient, all right? I will make one measurement and I will ask you to make the other measurement using a conversion factor, okay? All right, let's uh, now try, do the, the first trial. All right, the gun is loaded and the pendulum is ready. You can know, you know that the the height of the ball from the tabletop is 10 centimeter. All right, I'm going to now fire. There we go. We need to measure the height. So I'm now going to measure the height from the top of, I need to have my glasses there, from the top of the equipment to the center of the ball and I got as a 16 centimeter, well, 15.5 centimeter. That means add the three centimeter, this height from the tabletop is 
18.5 centimeter. So what is H equal to? If I take off some of these, okay, this is what we had. The ball was here first, and this height is 10 centimeter. And the ball has been raised now. The height now we measured is 18.5 centimeter. And therefore, what is the height to which the ball has been pushed up? Therefore, H equal to 18.5 minus 10 centimeter, which is 8.5 centimeter. That is the value of H. Okay, now you must use this value and work out a conversion factor and measure now your own values. And we are going to do it five, we're going to do five trials. And for the next four trials, you will measure the height on your own using the conversion factor. Okay? Alright, let's now do a second trial. Retrieve the ball, load the gun, and make sure that the pendulum is fixed properly, and fire, there it goes. All right, measure this height from the tabletop. Well, that is the height you will be measuring. From the, this is the height you will be measuring, of course. Measure that and add 3.5 and then take away 10. That will be your height. All right, that is trial number two. Okay, I hope you have finished the measurement. I'm going to leave, leave it for about 15 seconds for you to take the measurement. All right. Let's now do trial number three. Load the gun, fix the pendulum, and fire. Okay, measure this height, height from the top of the equipment to the center of the bob, and multiply by the conversion factor add 3.5 and then take away the original 10 centimeter and that is your H. Okay. I'm going to give you a couple more trials. I think we have done three now. Let's do a couple more trials. Okay, next trial, there it goes. And take your measurement. Okay, I hope you have taken the measurement. Let's now do the last trial. Okay, here you are. There you go. Before I leave you to work on your own, let me touch on the last question. The question number three on, on page three, I think. You have, uh, using the results in question one, find the fractional energy lost. And show that the fractional energy lost is big M over small m plus big M. Well, what is the initial energy before collision? Before collision, 
The energy is the energy of the projectile. Its velocity is V0. Is that right? Now, you know that the momentum of a moving object can be written as P equal to P equal no kinetic energy the kinetic energy of a moving object can be written in terms of the linear momentum I hope you remember this equation K equal to P over 2m therefore the initial kinetic energy the initial kinetic energy you see the pendulum has no kinetic energy initially it is at rest only the ball has kinetic energy so the initial kinetic energy is the initial momentum pi divided by 2 times small m where m is the mass of this now what is the final kinetic energy kf after this ball has been lodged in the pendulum what is the velocity of the system we just measured it right is big V so kf equal to one half of and we can write this in terms of the momentum which will be the final momentum divided by two times small m plus big M that is the final momentum the final kinetic energy and so what is the kinetic energy lost? Let's uh, obtain a relation between initial kinetic energy and the final kinetic energy. What is, tell me, what is Kf divided by Ki? Kf divided by Ki is, Kf is Pf divided by 2 times m plus m and divided by ki I will multiply by its reciprocal times 2 small m divided by pf but you know that the initial momentum this is pi you know that the initial momentum is the same as the final momentum because for all collisions momentum is conserved so they cancel the two and the two cancels therefore kf divided by ki is m over m plus m all right and therefore i can say kf equal to can i write it over here kf equal to m over m plus m times ki so the final kinetic energy is expressed in terms of the initial kinetic energy now you need to find the fractional energy loss to find the fractional energy lost we first of all find the energy lost what is the lost energy Lost energy is Kf minus Ki or Ki minus Kf because the initial kinetic energy is larger. All right, let me take all this off and write that here. Energy lost will be Ki minus Kf and that is equal to Ki minus, I'm going to write Kf as this quantity, m over m plus m times Ki. So that is the energy lost. And fractional energy lost is the energy lost divided by the original energy. So, if I now write it as fractional energy lost, it will be energy lost divided by the original initial kinetic energy. And so, this is the energy lost, divide that by the initial kinetic energy. And you notice that K 
KI will factor out on the numerator and cancel with KI on the denominator. And what does that now give you? That will be 1 minus M over M plus M. And now take this as the common denominator and simplify. This will give you big M over M plus M. And this is the fractional energy lost. Well, once all the questions are answered, submit the lab as usual. But this lab is slightly different from the others because we are going to use this lab for assessment purposes. In addition to giving you a grade, we will also use this lab to assess how students have been acquiring the skills of written communication, uh, critical thinking, how they handle data, how they interpret data. In other words, we are going to collect these labs from you and after grading it for, for the normal grading purpose, we will send them off to an assessment committee who will look at this work and then give an overall grade for each paper based on your communication skills, your ability to critically think, your ability to handle data and so on. So I want you to give special attention when you prepare your lab report. All right? We have given you a format for that report which is not different from the one we have already been doing. But pay attention to this and submit this report in two copies. One which is to be sent to the assessment committee and the other for the normal grading purposes. Alright? I will see you for the next lab later on.